Hello friends, how is everyone doing? It is Saturday and I have some footage from the week, but I'm afraid it's probably so disjointed but I might add it. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but it is pretty all over the place. Either way, I am going to catch you up on some diary entries, some things to be thinking about, kind of debrief you on the ones that I have written. We are getting ready for another storm. This one's supposed to be just like wind and cold, so that's okay. Last night we got the first hit of wind and we lost power, but our power came on about after three hours, so we're a-okay. And if we lose power, we can still work our fireplace, all of that. But we are just like settling in for a Saturday morning. Steven um, has ran out to do a Georgetown interview. He is on the alumni committee for Georgetown. So he interviews possible um, or potential students. So he's doing one of those today, but we'll just be out for a short amount of time. He's gonna grab some groceries because we're gonna make lasagna soup today and yeah. Sleepy dogs. This one went swimming today. Did you go swimming? I said, did go swimming. You can see she's a little extra curly because of the swimming. Still watching Michelle Wong all the time, but this old man is just sleepy. Just trying to stay warm. The house actually feels a little chilly, but I had some work I needed to wrap up today. So I went ahead and did that. I just had to get like some stuff uploaded, but I got that done. So for breakfast today, we had this chili corn quiche from Trader Joe's. Delicious. Spicy, but delicious. If you're near your Trader Joe's, grab it. This book is one that my mom put together um, before my grandmother passed. So that's my mom and my grandmother. My mom put this recipe book together and it's all of her favorite recipes in her handwriting, which means the world to me. And then occasionally throughout this, oh, let me find one for you. There's my grandmother's favorite recipes in her handwriting, like her waffle recipe, where she always said when she first ate the first waffle, whenever she would test it, she would always get the hiccups or she would say hiccups. And my, my mom actually wrote next to it. You know the story behind these. I think grandma wrote it on the back of the recipe. So let's go ahead and look. If you look on the back of the recipe, she wrote, <laughs> Note, instead of buttermilk, use two cups of milk with one and a half tablespoons of vinegar. Let stand about a minute. Note two, after you bake the first waffle, eat a piece of it. <laughs> with butter on. If you get the hiccups, they are really good. Oh, so just like, oh. But the fact that I have these in her writing, someday I'm gonna turn it like into a wallpaper. But yeah, it's full of the recipes, but I'm looking for one in particular. I have my grandmother's Sloppy Joe recipe. I have my grandma's, no one made better fudge than my grandmother, so I have her fudge recipe. I also have her sand tart recipe, which you guys all know um, is one close to my heart. Her banana nut bread. I, The church that we went to, we used to love their communion bread. So I, my mom has the church's communion bread recipe, which is so funny to me. I actually know where the recipe is that I want. I had removed it because I was using it. So I'll just dig it out of there in a second, but it's my mom's wacky cake. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. I am going to write the recipe down below for you so that you can still access it. It is the cake that my mom made for like all of our birthdays. So in my favorite moment, I had thought I recorded it was when the apple cider vinegar hits the baking soda and like bubbles, it used to be my favorite part as a kid. But I'm gonna put my mom's recipe down below for you. And I hope you enjoy it. And if you make it, please send me a picture um, so I can share it with my mom. But it was just like always the cake that we had. That was my birthday cake. I mean, 
my whole life with my mom. That's what she made for us. So a little bit of our family tradition down in the description box if you make it, feel free to share. I am just prepping some of the things for my lasagna soup and this old man is wondering. So I'm gonna top it with some ricotta and I just put some fresh basil, garlic, salt and pepper. I'm gonna let that sit in the fridge covered so that like it can kind of infuse the flavors. Cake is all done. It's almost cool enough to ice. So we are like three o'clock, 3.30ish. I won't start dinner for a while yet, but I have been doing dry January and I might just stick with it, but I'm gonna show you one of my favorite little mocktails to make. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some seltzer water. All right, we're gonna make a quick cranberry spritzer. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of cranberry juice to this. Top it with seltzer. And then throw in a little sprig of rosemary and a little mocktail. All right, friends, it's about four o'clock and I wanna get dinner going. I have two packages of 99% lean turkey with some Italian seasoning, crushed red pepper, and about a clove and a half of minced garlic. The cloves were really big. I would normally use two or three smaller ones, but they were large. So, oh, and a little salt and pepper. And now to that, let's add a couple things. I'm gonna add a jar of marinara sauce and then put about a half a cup or three quarter cups of water in here and just get this a really good shake to rinse out my jar and also get some more liquid in there. I need about 14 ounces of fire roasted tomatoes with the juice. So that's about half of this can. I'm going to add about two cups of beef broth, which is half of this box. I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit. And you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead, because I don't know what else I'll use these tomatoes for. I'm just gonna use them up. I mean, it's still gonna taste delicious. It might be a little thinner than I would want, but you know what? It will be still delicious. I'm gonna add a little bit more Italian seasoning to that, or just a, another little hit of crushed red pepper. While that comes to a boil, I'm gonna break up about two cups of lasagna noodles in about one inch slices. Breaking up those noodles was like a dangerous sport. I almost like lost an eye. <laughs> they broke like in shards of glass. So like be careful breaking lasagna noodles. The cake is also all done. Look how cute it is. I need to send my mom a picture of it. We're almost close to a full boil. We got a little going around the edges. It smells so good. The fire roasted tomatoes, the reason for those, if you didn't have them, you could totally throw in crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes with water. They just add like a longer cooked flavor to it if you're not going to be cooking it for a long period of time. Once this all gets really boiling, I'm gonna turn on the heat and throw these in for about 10 minutes. And then I have some extra beef stock on case it thickens up too much with the pasta. It is about five o'clock and the soup is done. So the way I'm going to serve this is with a little spoonful of ricotta and then some garlic twice baked croutons sprinkled on top. There it is all done and it looks so good. So good. I thought I'd share some of the prompts that I use during the week because it just feels so disjointed and also I'm afraid it'll get really long winded. So I'm trying to find like the perfect mm, video cadence. So I'm thinking Friday revisit, Saturday, this week I'm off on Monday so I, you'll get a video, three videos this weekend, probably Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure it all out. Unless we lose power again, then you'll get them when you get them. However, I was thinking of like maybe three videos a week. During the week, it just feels a little chaotic, but 
like I said, we're gonna make it work. But I did wanna share some of the prompts that I used this week. So let me pull up my notes on my phone where I've been using it. And then we're gonna also answer one. Who are the five people you are seeking approval from the most? I thought that one was powerful. It was also very interesting when I really reflected on it. Also, I had fun with this one. Write a short story or a poem or just write a way to express your courage. I did that one on Tuesday. What does unhappiness mean to you? And then the other was, what are the thoughts that are helping you improve your state of mind? I did that one this week and I actually shared it with my team. I've been doing a morning affirmation. I can leave the one link that I've been doing all this since January. Um, so it's been a good three weeks. And I think it's impacting less negative self-talk in my head. I don't know if that's true or if that's the reason, but I've definitely like sensed it a little bit. Anxiety hasn't really improved, but the way I'm speaking to myself about myself has improved. So I'll link that one. But let's dive into today's prompt. Where in life are you too hard on yourself? I feel like it would almost be easier and shorter to answer of like, where are you not hard on yourself? I feel like I'm hard on myself in every... <laughs> aspect of my life. I am so mean to myself sometimes. Um, I think I'm hard on myself in my job. I always think I'm not doing enough, should be doing more. I think I'm most hard on myself around like how I look and feel about myself physically. Um, just really hard on myself. Where else am I hard? I think I'm hard on myself in relationships that I should be doing more and be doing better. And I, I mean, I honestly think I am hard on myself in almost every aspect of my life. And that is really hard to say, but I am. That is one of the reasons that I just mentioned earlier, like the affirmations, trying to reduce the negative self-talk. Is it still present? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but it's not as constant as it has been in the past. I don't know. I'm just... I feel like I can tell you something nice or find a redeemable quality about almost every human I meet, no matter how despicable they are. But for the life of me, I am so mean to myself and am so hard on myself and nothing is ever good enough, which is just a hard way to navigate and live through life. So I think affirmations will really help. It's not something I've normally ever practiced, but like if you say something enough, you begin to believe it. And I think that's what I'm trying to do more. And I don't know what this is a cause of. I think because I have had the most supportive and loving family ever. They are the kindest, biggest cheerleaders ever and my relationships with people are really good. Like I grew up with a really loving and supportive like network around me. I think a large amount of like where my negativity started or lies or is rooted in is we throw around the word bully a lot. And I think it's something I'm super sensitive to because I think there's real bullying and then there is like the things that happen in life where people say something unkind. What I experienced in my growing up and in my schooling from about, I would say second, third grade, second, third grade is felt is where I can like really think about the change till I was in college. And even in college, I had some instances like what I experienced was like real bullying where it was constant targeted, all of those things. I went through school and I didn't talk to people. I had zero friends. I never went to a party, never went to a school dance, never did any of that stuff. Um, if I went to a school like football game or something, I went with my mom and my dad, even in high school or junior high. I just didn't have that experience because I didn't have friends. My mom and my grandma were my friends along with like a handful of people at church camp or within my church youth group, but I didn't have friends. Uh, so like I never experienced those things because school was so terrible. I just didn't want to be a part of it. And I think part of it is 
you heard such negative things and mean things said about yourself day in, day out, nonstop, that they have just become like seared into you. Um, and that you've heard it enough that you start believing it. So now at the age of 40, I'm trying to reverse it. And do I have areas in life where I feel confident? Absolutely. And I've had beautiful moments professionally and personally where like I have felt so good about something I've done or the way I've looked or like instances of that. But I don't have like a day in day out like good relationship with how I talk to myself. And that is definitely something as I go into my 40s that I'm trying to improve. And like I said, the daily affirmations seem to have lessened it a little bit, but by no means is it gone. I feel like these entries, you guys are really getting a glimpse in to who I am and a little bit about how I was raised in my lived experience. And it resonates with many of you, and for some of you it doesn't, and that makes me so happy. I hope no one has experienced some of the things that I've experienced. Um, but I know some of you also have, and I get you, and I understand you, and I think it's really hard to navigate life with people who don't understand, and people who think that you just like move on or get over it, or like why does that impact you? I don't think people understand if they've not experienced like a long-term or the long-term effects of some traumatic experiences that have happened to us. And the fact that we don't deal with them or address them. So I see you and I value you and I appreciate you and I think you are spectacular. See, it's so easy to say it to people, but why is it so hard to say to ourselves? It's something we should all work on and strive to be better at. But take care of yourself. Take care of others. Be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone, my friends. Until next time, which will be probably again Sunday, which is probably today because I'll probably finish uploading this on Sunday and publishing it and then doing it on Sunday night. Um, take care, friends. Bye-bye.